It is good to see everyone out this morning. Glad you're here with us. Everyone, look at your neighbor. It's just a person next to you. And give them the best smile God ever gave you. The best smile God ever gave you. We sing because we're happy. God has truly, truly blessed each and every one of us. He's, his eyes on the sparrow. His eyes on you. He cares for each and every one of us. He loves us with a love that's unconditional. And because of his great love for us, because the sacrifice that was made at Calvary, you better be smiling. You better be appreciative of what God has done for you. Are you happy this morning? Can you name your blessings and count them one by one? And you just run out of time because God's been so good to you. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to start with verse 12 and go to the end of the chapter. 1 Corinthians 12, beginning in verse 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, these parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And yet, I will show you the most excellent way. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning's hour, for the assembly here today. Praying your blessings to be upon each one of us that's here, those who could not be here for various reasons, Lord God. For those who may be watching uh, via the internet, Father, we pray your blessings upon them. Likewise, we pray your blessings upon your word this morning, Father God, knowing that's not going to return to you void, but that you're going to bless it. It's going to convict us. It's going to edify you. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul writes to the Corinthians. This letter is considered his first letter to the Corinthians. He founded the Corinthians church on his second missionary journey. And Corinth was part of a metropolitan area 
where, where the Corinthians at this particular time in history were worshiping many, many different types of gods. It's whatever seemed to be the most convenient for them, the one that they felt would be the most beneficial for them. Paul comes along and, and he forms or he founded this particular church. And as you read the scriptures and as you read Corinthians, you find there's trouble in this church. There's a lot of division going on within this church. A lot of division as to which one of the apostles of Jesus they're going to follow. Which one of the disciples they're going to follow. In fact, do we even follow Jesus or do we follow Paul or do we follow Apollos? Who do we follow? Peter? A lot of divisions, a lot of controversies going on. And when we take a look at chapters 12, 13, and 14 in Corinthians, and we're just looking at part of chapter 12 today, we find that there's even problems about looking at the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to each and every one of us who believe in Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior. A lot of divisions. And as you think about the church in America, and I can only think of the church in America, I have a hard time sometimes thinking of the church of God, the church of Jesus Christ in the other countries, because we see having a tendency right now for for some reason, we as a church, you know, those people are ministering to us today. They seem to be sending the, the, the uh, evangelists to the United States. But I can only think about the church in America. You know, I, I really think sometimes that the churches in other countries are more evangelical than we are here in the United States. They seem to have a closer walk with God because they are so dependent upon Him. But, you know, we in America, we have this tendency so often to rely on ourselves because we live in, in, in the country of good and plenty. You know, whatever you want. I don't think there's anyone in this congregation this morning that's really, truly, truly lacking. If you really want something, you can go get it. In Corinth, there was a lot of division going on. I think in our country today, within the church of God, the church of Jesus Christ, there's a lot of division. There's a lot of division. You know, when we go back to the first part of Corinthians, we read about the divisions, whether I follow Peter, Cephas, who's Peter, whether I follow Apollos, whether I follow Paul. We have that same problem in this church because people sometimes look to the leadership of the church and follow the man or follow the woman and say, oh, I listen to so-and-so person. I watch so-and-so person and they just seem to be the person of God. And they follow that person. We need to be so cautious on that. I do remember this and maybe you remember this. But, you know, we had some great tele televangelists uh, going back into the early 1980s who were, who were people who looked at them as esteemed pillars of the church, and, and they fell from grace, so to speak, because they got themselves caught up in sin, and it was exposed to them. And I found myself at that particular time, even myself, and I was a fairly new Christian, saying, you know, because I'd go home after after work and I'd have the uh, TV on and I'd watch these people on TV and they, you know, they were preaching the Word of God. But their life outside of the church wasn't what it ought to have been. So we need to be cautious on that. Corinthians were having that same issue. Paul had to address that with them. They, Paul had to address sin within the church. You know, there was tremendous sin within the church. And he had to address that. And when we start reading the very first part of 1 Corinthians, we read about all these spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us. And you know, when we are born again Christians, we all have Jesus Christ in our heart. And we've all accepted him as our Lord and Savior. And when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have been endowed, we have been given the Holy Spirit. And each and every one of us who have accepted Jesus Christ has the gifts of the Holy Spirit within us. But the problem that they had is, again, the same problem that we have in America today. We look at the spiritual gifts given to us, and some of the churches will say, well, this is the most important gift, or this is the most important gift, or you can't go to heaven unless you have this particular gift. Whatever that gift may be, and they were prioritizing, they were saying this is the most important, second, third, fourth, etc. 
Or you are not even a born-again Christian unless you have this particular gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I've read my Bible at least one time through. Maybe more than that. And, and in all my studies, in all my reading, and, and I'm not that intelligent, I'm not a theologian, and I don't get into all the debates, but I've not found anywhere in God's Word that it says that this is the most important spiritual gift given by the Holy Spirit. Now, if you find something different than that, please tell me. And let's have a little study on it. And if you can enlighten me, I'd appreciate it. But I've not found anywhere in the Scripture that says this is the most important or that you will not go to heaven unless you have this gift or you're not even a Christian unless you have that gift. But that was part of the problem within the Corinthian church. That's part of the problem we have in America today. Another part of the problem we have in America today with the Christian church is unless you are flourishing as a Christian, maybe you're caught up in sin. I can't refine that in my scriptures either. But what Paul's addressing, and this is just immediately following the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he was talking about. He starts talking about the actual body of Christ itself. Those people who make up the church. So I want us to, this morning to examine our church, Asher Glade Church of the Brethren this morning. And how do we fare in what we're doing? How do we fare when we take, talk about the gifts given to us by the Holy Spirit? Where do we stand? Where do you stand individually on that? Because all spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. All spiritual gifts. We all have those. And simply through God's grace, He gives those gifts as He feels that He needs to give the gifts to but individual gifts, outside of what we call those spiritual gifts, God has gifted each and every one of us with abilities and talents and skills. And when you look at your own personal life, you can say, I am good at. I am good at this. I am good at that. I am not very good at this. And you don't want me to be involved doing that. See, that's one of the problems that we have. Sometimes we look at each other and say, well, I need you to do this, but you haven't been gifted in that area. You do not want me to build your house. You don't even want me to consult in building the house. Okay? You don't want me to drive a nail in your house. That's how bad I am. But that is not my gift. You people have come to the men's breakfast and some of you guys have brought the light to the whole church and I'm offended about this. But I can't even make a pancake, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I can cook other things. I, you know, I can't make pancakes. That's not my gift either. But some of you people are excellent cooks. Some of you people are excellent builders. Some of you are excellent seamstress. Some of you... You know, when you look at your gifts, some of you communicate well with other people. Some of you have <laughs> gifts that you can comfort people. Some of you have the gifts of compassion. You have gifts of hospitality. And when you take a look at your own personal gifting that God has given you, it doesn't always have to be this spiritual gift of speaking in tongues or interpreting of tongues or prophecy or preaching. It doesn't have to be those spiritual gifts. Are you using the talents and the abilities God has given you for His glory? Are you using those for His kingdom? How are you doing with that? You see, there's not any one gift more important than another. All the gifts of God are very, very important. Don't hierarchy the gifts and say, well, because I can do this, I must be more important than you. Than you. See, Paul explains to the Corinthians, God created the body to where, where the foot can say to the, you know, to the eye, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing the whole thing here, that I'm more important than you. Or the eye can't say I'm more important than the ear. You know? and, and because I'm not the eye, I must not be important. We're all important in the body of Christ. Every single one of us. Because he's gifted each and every one of us with special gifts for the building of this church. 
but we can so, so often get into this habit of criticizing or condemning or judging people by what they can't do. And we just need to be very cautious about that. As you guys know, uh, a good portion of my life has been involved in athletics. And you people who are involved in athletics, who were involved in athletics, who are involved in athletics now, you should be able to relate to this a little bit. But you know there's no I in team. Do you understand that? You people who are involved in athletics right now, there's no I in team. It's not about me. You know, when you're on a team, it's not about you. It's about the team. And coaches try to get that across to their athletes all the time. But yet we find on sports teams, so often, we find athletes who they're the most important person on the team. We find that mostly in the high school ranks because they want to achieve a certain level to get to a certain spot. But there's no I on team. Within the church, there's no I in team. We all work together and we all fit together in the body of Christ. We all do what we can do. I know when we were building the stage out here, probably Jesse and his dad cringed when I showed up. You know? The only thing I was good for on that stage is holding up a beam high enough so that they could do something with it. You know, I didn't always need to have a ladder. But other than that, they really didn't want me there. You know? Because that's not my gifting. But I want to ask you a question. Is what is your gifting? And are you using that gifting for the glory of God. Are you using that for the building of the church? This church? And the church of Jesus Christ? What is it? You know, we have to examine ourselves to determine what we are best at and what it is that we are best at. We need to use that for God's glory. We can be in a church and I've seen it where we have these gifts that if you were to take it outside the church you could charge $250 for a consultation fee even. But we bring it within the church and we donate that. Because that's what we do in the body of Christ. We give and we give. That is what we call storing up our treasures in heaven. Are you storing up your treasures in heaven? Are you giving to the church of God? Storing up our treasures. So often we're so concerned about Daddy. receiving the credit for the things that we do in the church Daddy. that I want the church to notice me for what I've done. And the scripture is very plain on that. If you want all the accolades, if you want all the attention pointed to you for the things you do for this church, it says in the scripture that you've already received your reward. And there's no storing up in heaven of those things. Because I know I can stand up here right now and I can go to each, each person in this church, every single one of you, and I can pinpoint and name something you've done for this church, every single one of you. But once that is brought out and, and you puff your chest up and hold your head up high and say, yes, I did that, You've lost that reward. 
Don't go around saying, I did this and I did that for the church. You've lost your reward. We're all one. We all form the body of Christ. Every single one of us. So Paul goes and he talks about these spiritual gifts. And understand, all the spiritual gifts are given for the edifying or the lifting up of the church. All given for the glory of God. We're all given the different roles within the church to fulfill. All for the edifying and the glory of God. But the last verse, I think the last verse of this chapter is so key. After he goes through all this dissertation about the spiritual gifts and about the body, he says, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. And that's when he gets into chapter 13. That most excellent way that Paul talks about is love. You can take all the gifts away. You can take the spiritual gifts away. You can take all the other gifts away that the Holy Spirit gives you. But if you have love one for another, that is the most excellent way. The love that we have for each other within this church, the lifting up of each other, the compassion we show to each other, and what we do outside of this church for those people who are in need, the most excellent way, love. Not looking at a person's, what they are involved in and what they're doing, saying, well, that person doesn't deserve it because of the lifestyle that they're living. So why should I give their or judgment? We give because we love. God sent the Son Jesus Christ to this earth because of His unconditional love for us. Most excellent way? Love. God didn't look down from heaven and look at mankind and say, well, they aren't deserving. He looked down and said, because of what they've done, I've got to show them a more excellent way. And he gave us Jesus. The godly agape love that we read about in Scripture. The agape love that we read about in 1 Corinthians 13. That is the most excellent way. So when you examine spiritual gifts, when you examine all the other gifts that the Holy Spirit gives you, Bring it into play, love. You may question those gifts that you have. But if you love, it covers a multitude of sins. People can look at you and they can see whether or not you love or not. You love one another. That's the command that Jesus gave to his disciples, love one another. He said, even as I have loved you, love one another. With the love that God has for you, love one another. 